Hello, Daniel from Sandra Daly here. This is a no hate sermon. This is a Torah Prophecies video. I'll, I'll assign the number with, with when the video goes on. It's a Torah Prophecies video. A Series 3 Torah Prophecies video. Volume, um, I'm not sure what volume it is in Series 3. But anyway, um, I've already addressed this in a previous video. But I thought I'd go, go over it again. And just um, It's on Isaiah. The, um, right. Isaiah chapter 11. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, and so on. Generally, people can, I think, can read that for themselves for the most part. Chapter 11. But um, some things I'd point out is that um, this is a tradi the traditional Messiah. Um, verse 12. He will reign in sin, in sin for the nations and will assemble the outcasts of Israel and gather the dispersed of Judah from the four corners of the earth. And we see that... Um, he, he gathers them from... Assyria, Egypt, Paphros, Ethiopia, Elam, Shana, and Hamath, and from the coastlands of the sea. Now, Paphros, Ethiopia, Ethi well, Ethiopia does, Elam, and Shana, and Hamath, they're not really known cultures anymore. They're not really known societies anymore. They faded away into, um, into history. And, um... It's not like Israel are in ex exile anymore. They're not in exile. There's people, Jewish people who in, live in the world, but they live there voluntarily. And they can make, I think it's called Ali or something like that, they can return to Israel whenever they want. The idea that they need a Messiah to bring them back to Israel, that is such a cop-out. And it's, there's just no truth that they're dispersed. The, the nation's restored, they're, they're back in Israel. There's just no truth to any idea that there's any dispersion amongst Israel at the moment. And, quite frankly, this prophecy of Isaiah is written during, it's pre-exilic, before the Babylonian exile, um, written during the reigns of kings. Let's go to... During the reigns of kings Isaiah, Jotham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, kings of Judah. So it's before the Babylonian exile. Now, really, as I've said before, the only redemption which Isaiah could know of at the time of this prophecy is the redemption from the Assyrian exile, which happened about, I think it's 700 odd BCE, which was um, something which had happened in his time frame. That's the redemption which would be on the mind of this prophet and which would be the context of this prophecy. Redemption from where they'd gone in, in the Assyrian exile. And they'd gone to various places in exile. The thing is, a Babylonian exile then happened. And they, they came back from Babylonian exile. They were returned from the Babylonian exile. So even if this, because it talks about how they're dispersed to Shinar, which is in Babylon, and Elam, which is in Babylon, even if this prophecy is waiting on uh, the exile of Babylon to happen, and then to redeem them from that exile, which I don't think the context is talking about, because they were probably in exile in various places from the Assyrian scattering. Even if it's waiting upon that, then it's already happened the return from that exile. That's already happened. After 70 years of exile in Babylon, they've returned. So the return from exile has already happened. So it's already complete. So the only real time frame and placing you can place with this messianic redeemer gathering back from exile, at best is post-Babylonian uh, exile, the only real figure which could mean anything would be Zerubbabel, the governor of Judah. There's only one who could come close to any sort of fulfillment of that. There's no other king, there's no other 
idea of messianic redemption now valid? So all this orthodoxies, messianic, messianic stuff, it's just waffle. Now I would argue in the end that I don't think it's waiting on a Babylonian exile. They're not waiting on the exile to Babylon. The prophets, prophecy is not anticipating that there's going to be an exile to Babylon. And then all of from Assyrian and, and Babylon being redeemed and from Egypt and so forth. It's in the context of the Assyrian exile, which Isaiah 11 is happening, during, before the Babylonian exile has happened, with the kings of Judah still reigning in Isaiah's lifetime. So, um, either way, there's just no future eschatology out of that. And um, they didn't really have any king redeemer who stood as an ensign to the nations. Just didn't happen. Zerubbabel is the closest they've got, and he's, he doesn't really fulfill it properly. There's other prophecies which I talk about in Haggai, how he builds the second temple and um, has a signet ring of the Lord, or the Lord's authority is on, on him. And not by, there's a saying about it, not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts, or whatever it is. That's applied to Zerubbabel, so he's only a real close fit, but he doesn't fulfill it perfectly either. It's, and I want to talk about something else which I think generally shows that it's not really valid. We see in, in chapter 11 that, um, that uh, verse 6, The wolf shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the lion, and the father together, and the little child shall lead them. And in verse 9, Thou shalt not destroy in all, hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters come to the sea. Chapter 11. Now if we go into chapter 65, I think it's 65. Um, at the end of 60, chapter 65, verse 25, we see that teaching of Isaiah 11 repeated. The wolf of the lamb shall feed together, the lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be used for serpent's food, I shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountains, says the Lord. So the time frame for Isaiah 65 is clearly parallel with the time frame of Isaiah 11. And there's something I want to bring up about Isaiah 65 in verse 22, we're talking about the elect of God, the elect Israel, of around Jerusalem and so forth. But I shall not build in another inhabit, I shall not plant in another eat, for like the days of a tree shall the days of my people be, and my chosen shall long enjoy the works of the hands. Now, like the days of a tree. Trees live for centuries. And the, essentially the teaching is that they shall... Uh, we see earlier that those who don't live to a hundred years shall be accursed. Or considered not blessed or whatever it is. Um, Here we go, in, in, the, in verse 20. No more shall there be an, an infant that lives but a few days, or an old man who does not live the latter's days. For the child shall die a hundred years old, and the sinner a hundred years old shall be accursed. So, you know, I mean, it's, um, it never happened. My point is that we, we have no records in the Bible or in any no one knows in the culture about people living for centuries during the, that time of period of life in uh, around Zerubbabel and post-exile with the redemption of exile. There was never any long-lived lived people. It's uh, living for centuries like the lives of a tree. What all this is from Isaiah, it's not God's teaching. It's not God teaching this message. It's Isaiah's inspiration from where, from his imagination and what he thinks is a good idea. It's not God's teaching. If God's really, the Spirit of God's really behind that teaching, he would have fulfilled it properly. The idea that it's waiting to a, a final messianic age, that's just a dream that they've held on to for thousands of years. It's just a, a, 
it's an idolatry, really, a messianic idolatry. Messianic fever. Jesus coined onto all of that and pumped himself up as a messianic redeemer. Because there was a messianic fever still going on. Because we're looking for a man to save him. We're looking for a king man to save him. If you read 1 Samuel chapter 8, God is not impressed with Israel seeking after a king. He gives him one, but he's not impressed with it. He says, they've rejected me. He said that to Samuel. They've rejected me. They want a human king. Give them one. Or these are the stipulations. So, um, there's no latter-day messianic age. And in the end, that, that prophecy, it's man-made. It's not God, because he wouldn't have got such a teaching. He wouldn't have failed in fulfilling his prophecy. If it was really God's prophecy, he wouldn't have failed in it. So in the end, Isaiah, it's not the word of God.